thank you very much. It's great to see your shining faces all here. And when I left California, the weather was just about like this. <laughs> it was sunny. Yes. We could see the sun. It was 84. We came back, and it was 12. So it was just like this, right? So this is one of the exciting parts of what we do. Um, I'm going to try today not to get too verbose on some of this, which all of you can laugh about because do I like to talk? And I'm inspired and excited. I want to pass this on to you. There's some incredible things happening out there, and there's been a lot that has changed since we met last time. Anybody think that the last four months have had some pretty significant changes? <laughs> Anybody so full they can't put their hand up yet? <laughs> I just had to ask both, just had to ask both. So, you know my partner, Ken, as well. We, you've seen our team grow over time. We've won some awards, that's great. Uh, the key is, I say we. You know I've sent something out about that. This is interesting. There's a couple more coming that we know about. You'll see those fairly soon. But the key, again, is if we can contribute to your lives in some way, that's important. That's the significance to us. And that's what these things mean, that's great. The awards in and of themselves, are, are, don't mean a whole lot to us. But if they confirm the belief that we're a pretty decent team, I love it. That's what we like. That's what we like to hear. So again, more congratulations to you as we get these. These are yours. Now with that, I had Tim request, he was the first one to request, that this become a traveling trophy. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is take sign-ups. Ashley or Lisa will take them. Choose your week. <laughs> Don't break a wing, thank you, exactly. <laughs> and if there's any damage, make sure it's sent properly via UPS. So, thank you very much for coming out today. We're gonna try to make it quite educational, entertaining, and if we can blow your mind a little bit, that's also part of our goal. Oh, you've seen our team, and I like to recognize them. So again, who won this? Our team. You see Ken and I up here, but more importantly, the only reason that we can be up here is because we have the support and stand out of the shoulders of people in this area right here of the room. So before I go on, if you may, you guys probably all know my team, but I'd like to introduce, of course, Ashley. Now, Peter says if you haven't met him. Who hasn't met Peter? He's been here for 13 <laughs> years. He's a strapping young lad. We all know him, right? That's Peter. <laughs> And if you can understand her, we have Lisa, who speaks British. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we have Kristen as well, who's joined us. Many of you met with her. She's absolutely fabulous as well. Now, what I want to introduce to you is one new important member of our team. His name is Zach DeBoer. He comes from us. He's been for the last two years in Marshfield. I know, does anybody here know where Marshfield is? Okay, actually, is there a clinic up there? <laughs> right, he doesn't come from the clinic. But he's been an advisor up there. We've had some great discussions and he was referred to us by one of our clients in the room. So a lot of times you give us referrals of other people who might work with us, but here's a great, great addition. We hit it off immediately and we had a great, great referral to Zach. So with our conversations, here's how we did it. The whole team has interviewed him. I think we made Zach come down like four or five times. I don't remember what it was, but. He's been very patient with us, but we want to be certain about him joining our practice. We think the person is extremely important because we can teach the technical. Good news is he's got both. When Ken came over, he had both. So the good news, I'd like to introduce Zach DeBoer as well. Please. So you're going to see more and more about him. I'll send out a full bio, but what's interesting is how new is Zach? He was registered here yesterday at about 2 p.m to be able to show up. Registrations are very serious, so he is fully registered today and truly able to join our team. So I'm gonna give him 20 minutes just to talk a little later. <laughs> no, no, I won't do that. I need all the 20 minutes I can get. <laughs> so again, it's great to have a new member of our team. It grows because why? We are very interested in our service and contribution to you. I like to be ahead of the game. You've given us some great introductions, I want to make sure we can serve you and serve you extremely well. So this, again, is why we add members to our team. You've seen it go. Anybody remember when it was just essentially me 
and maybe an assistant. Yeah, look at you guys, you guys are all here. What amazes me is that you come back every year for the seminar. <laughs> I was asking a client, man, you hear the same thing? No, Chris, we like it. So I got to throw in some extra jokes and be funny, I suppose, as, as we do. But as you all know, how do we typically start? I typically do what? I go big. We begin in gratitude. So beginning in gratitude for me means I'm grateful that you allow me to go out and become a leader for your family when it comes to financial services and what we're about to talk about later. I'm also grateful that my family got to join me for a couple of days out in California because it's kind of a lonely place when they're not there. I'm FaceTiming, talking to them at night, and they got schedules. But we got to have a wonderful experience out there. My girls got to see the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Of course, that's a big one, right? <laughs> I'll send you pictures of the girls, but I don't have to anymore because we got their faces molded in clay by one of the vendors outside. My mom last night says, those are scary. <laughs> those look like those little dolls that used to frighten me when I was a kid. I said, well, good news is we'll have them forever and they're going to be on the wall. <laughs> but I want to take 60 seconds for each one of you. I want to set it down. Just take something over the past quarter for you that you're grateful for. Okay, so I'm going to allow you a few minutes. You've got pens, you've got things to write down on the, and, and again, if somebody comes up with something significant in the past 40 days, and I know there's some significance in this room, I'm also going to ask that you share it if you like. Now, what I find important about why we start with gratitude every time is because the world does not hit you with gratitude every day, does it? It's a rapid shift in your mentality, and I do that on purpose. So one of the things I like to do is I like people to share that. And to put people on the spot, the very first thing I like to do is point at somebody, which is Ken. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm Would you ready. share? Oh, he's ready this right, time. So I didn't get to Hello, everybody. <clears throat> um, so I, I got, I, there's, there's a ton of them. But the ones that come to mind is, first of all, grateful for all of you to be here. Without you guys, this stuff isn't possible. So, so thank you. A funny one, though, I think is, is I'm grateful for, grateful for Taekwondo. So I have, a, I have four kids, two of them are which are in, in I'll call it karate because I can't say taekwondo, so I'll say karate, <laughs> six year old and four year old. And as, as you may know, they bow before they come onto the mat, right? The, the, the instructor is master. And so I think this is all great stuff. So I'm like, I wonder how this stuff is going. So the other night, I'm like, hey Parker, hey Adriana, it's time to brush your teeth. And all of a, all, all of a, all of a sudden I heard, yes sir, and I was like, <laughs> look at my wife, I'm like, did you hear this? <laughs> yes, sir, yes, ma'am. I'm like, they're actually listening to what we're saying? I'm like, how many days are they doing this? They're doing it two days a week. I'm like, sign them up for seven days. <laughs> this stuff is working. So I'm, I'm grateful for karate. <laughs> On a more serious note, um, we have a client uh, that, um, I, I, this is very sad, it hit, it hit home for me, is that right before the holidays, their daughter was diagnosed with breast cancer, 30-some years old. Two weeks later, the mother was diagnosed with small cell lung cancer. So this family is completely upside down right now. I know, I believe in miracles. You know where they come from. So if everyone can say a, a little prayer on your own time, not right now, but maybe before bed tonight or, or during dinner, say a prayer for this family because they need it. So I just want to leave Absolutely. you with that. Thank you. you bet. Does anyone from the audience <clears throat> have something they're grateful for they'd like to share? I'm going to point Keith. Please. Now, we had six grandchildren here for two nights over Christmas, and it was just like a big, we sent them all down the basement with sleeping bags. It was like a big sleepover. <coughs> so we, we had a lot of fun. It was really great to have those kids around and spend some time with them. Uh, after Christmas, the sandwich was also real nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, for a while, did you feel like there were seven kids? I mean, because we know Keith is like, there's, there's six kids, and Keith. <laughs> By the way, uh, normally I give you, when you're the first participant, what? I give you a hundred grand, right? Well, it's been a little lean lately. <laughs> but I'm going to give you a choice. I'll give you a cookie that is your ability to take a bite out of the IRS. That's what he got. <laughs> and because he's a first participant, I gave him 100 grand. So you can tell him, I saw somebody give somebody 100 grand a day. It was awesome. Thank you. 
Anyone else? Please, yes. Oh, my goodness. Wow, yes. So, thank you. The baby's all right in your daughter's. That's fantastic to hear. It's your granddaughter, right? Yes, thank you. That's great to hear. I appreciate that. Anyone else have something they'd like to share? Sure. I'm grateful for my family. Ah, yes. Helping to enrich my family. Absolutely. And I'm also very close to Hunter. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I tell you what, yeah. we're grateful for Byron. He hasn't volunteered yet, but let's give him a hundred grand. <laughs> is that cool? <laughs> because, by the way, the referral of Zach as well is Cindy and Byron. So, yeah, just I, I didn't know if I was supposed to expose that or not, but I just did. So, <laughs> just just the way we can, yeah. we can give you two hundred grand. No, <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, and we had yes, please. Chris, I'm grateful. Back in November. Privilege to uh, hold a birthday party for my mother, her 99th birthday. Aww. Yes. Wow. And as usual, <clears throat> I'm blessed to have experienced in December the 47th wedding anniversary of my lovely wife. Oh, that's awesome. Very nice. Very nice. Absolutely awesome. Very that's nice. Fantastic. And and what do you usually like to say at the end of your statements? Go. Go Duke. Go Duke. Go Duke. Yes, because he <laughs> is an Iron Duke. <laughs> you may. Thank you. Please. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> I love nice. it. Very Thank, nice. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. I, I appreciate it. I know it's not always easy to share. Sometimes I have you share amongst your table. There becomes something magic when you're grateful, but it's even more magic when you share it out loud because the world needs to hear it. This isn't the stuff you hear on the news, right? We've, we've talked about that. Um, now, in a dramatic shift from gratitude, I'm going to shift to Tajik Tikijga. <laughs> Flows right off the tongue, doesn't it? Yeah. Tikijga. <laughs> the Tax Cuts and Job Act, and it's probably going to add up of 2017 or 18, whether they finally passed it. But what it is, is I call this the A, F A, F E A. Accountant and Financial Advisor Full Employment Act. <laughs> Because this is confusing, is it not? Have you seen? They don't even have the provisions understood fully yet, but that's what we're here. If there's any deep, important questions, Ken will answer them. <laughs> no problem. I'm just here to try to be funny. So let's go through that. Anybody see there was substantial changes? It's kind of funny as you went. It was signed into law by President Trump the 22nd of December. Um, it's the largest tax code overhaul in 31 years. Remember, you've seen the little thing that Ashley was handing out. You're going to be able to put your taxes on a postcard, right? Eh, we didn't quite get there, did we? No, it's pretty doggone much like what we have presently, but some significant changes. So we were going to have three simple tax brackets, right? Right. right. <coughs> we still have seven. Okay? Standard deductions increased, right? So for many, that's good. The standard deduction increased. So we now might not have to itemize in some cases. There's a SALT tax, and that's state and local income tax, though. There's now a limitation. And states that are not happy about that are what states? California, New York, Wisconsin. For anybody who has a state tax that's significant, a state tax, you have a limitation now between that and your real estate taxes. So a lot of people in California are not happy with this. They're thinking about becoming a 51st state. Maybe, we, maybe they're going to move to Puerto Rico. <laughs> uh, the childhood tax credit doubled. 
the mortgage interest rate deductions for new mortgages decrease. So if you have one that's a million and a half bucks, you're fine. I don't recall too many million and a half, but the new limit's 750. Alternative minimum tax increased. Medical expense deduction modified actually as a benefit. It was 10% last year. Guess what it is this year? 7.5%. But that's for two years, and then they're going to decide what happens after that. So maybe it becomes permanent, maybe not. Um, you go through elimination of Affordable Care Act's individual mandate penalty, lowered the corporate tax rate. Ken will talk more about this. Pass-through income will be taxed differently. That's something they do not understand what a pass-through entity is yet. Estate tax remain, but exemption levels double. Now, that's just a summary. We'll go through more of this. Who here has a really good hold on this new thousand-page addition to the simplification of taxes? Good, okay, I didn't think so. But we don't have any of our professional partners in the, in the room either, so that's good that they didn't raise their hand. <laughs> so the individual income tax rates. So here's what it is. What you're going to see on this is the 2017 rates. You're going to see the 10 and 15 percent rate. You'll see a couple of changes. 15 went to 12. You'll see where 28 was. We'll get some data on this for you as well. 28 becomes 24. 33 becomes 32, 35 really kind of now resides in this 32 range, but you'll see 35 is still here. The 39.6 uh, is replaced by 37%. So you'll find that the average extremely wealthy person is probably going to have a net, um, we're finding calculation-wise, a net even to maybe slightly more, depending on how you have deductions. You're going to find the average person who most benefits are going to be in these bands right here in the, in the $100,000 to $200,000 range. So we put another chart up for that. Looking at these, you're going to find that the 10 and 12, this makes it more point. You see how this changed? It's a 3% deduction. So they're trying to give you more um, savings when it comes to rates and less overall deductions you have to take. That's how they tried to simplify it once they had to wrangle it. The true simplification of this is going to be if there's one party in rule and they dictate it. That's about the only way for people to agree, right? So it's give and take. Absolutely. The next piece here is what Chris mentioned before is the standard deduction. So what we've seen here is basically a double standard deduction. So uh, a married couple filing jointly, last year it was $12,700 for the deduction, if you will. Now if in 2018, now we're seeing that to be $24,000. So that's going to affect some of you in the room, which is a good thing. Um, what comes to mind when I see this right away is we always try to find planning opportunities for you. So think about this, if you, were, if you were itemizing and we were at say 12, 13, 14, 15 thousand dollars of deductions, now we, now we have a little room for 24 thousand, right? So there's some opportunity there. Um, so that, that, that's something Chris and I will talk to you about at our review meetings is something probably called Roth conversions. We've talked about it for a long time. We're gonna continue to talk about it because I think there's some opportunities here uh, that, that are in the room. If you've noticed in the reviews that we've done with you in the last six months to a year, you've noticed Lisa sitting down with you before the meeting, Ashley sitting down with you before the meeting, and also Julie who is sick today, um, and, and sometimes Kristen as well. We've been, we've been getting to know you more because we want to help serve you better. So when you take a look, uh, when we ask you questions about your, your estate planning attorney, your accountants, things of that nature, um, again, this is on a case-by-case -case basis. What we want to do is form some sort of relationship with your accountant. Uh, not that we need to talk to him or her all the time, but we need to keep the lines of communication open. So when we get to the year end and we do some tax planning for you, uh, most accountants aren't proactive and say, hey, by the way, do you want to do a Roth conversion? That's not what they're talking about. They're usually like, hey, let's do some taxes, we'll do fine. But it's, it's up to us to identify these opportunities with you so we can partner with your team, accountants, um, and also the estate planning attorneys to optimize opportunities in your wealth. That make sense? Very good. It does. The next one here is exemptions. So with the double standard deduction that we saw, the personal exemptions have gone away. Okay? What's, what, what, what has come back, and Chris has mentioned this, is the, is the child tax credit. I'm going to steal Chris's joke here. Kids are now deductible, but they're still taxing. <laughs> By Sorry. the way, it was my joke, but Ken has more kids, <laughs> so I gave it to him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the, the expanded child tax credit is a, is a big one because what was happening there is that it may not affect everybody in the room right now, but it may affect your children or grandchildren, is that married couples were being phased out of this at $110,000 of income. So a lot of families 
weren't getting the tax credits or deductions for those little kiddos running around. They've expanded that up to $400,000 now. That's going to be more encompassing of a lot of families out there. So there'll be a lot more credits for those families as well. Another piece that we, we're seeing as far as the kids go are the 529 plans. So this is for you if you're contributing to a grandchild's 529, which is a college savings plan, or, or your children are doing this for, for your grandkids. Um, what we're seeing there is that they've expanded the rules, if you will, and, and the, the ability to use those monies. So before it was strictly for higher education. Now they've ex expanded this to pay for primary and secondary uh, tuitions, if you will, mm -hmm. up to $10,000. So that's going to uh, provide some opportunities because private schooling uh, seems to be kind of a buzzword now. It, al it always has been, uh, but it, it seems to be on the forefront of a lot of parents' minds today. So just wanted to bring that to your attention as well. State local tax deduction. So this was basically uh, de deducting your Wisconsin income tax that you pay as your income. It was unlimited, now it's up to $10,000. It's actually pretty quick to, if, to get to 10,000 if you think about it. So a, a couple making $100,000, uh, and say we're in a five or 6% state tax bracket, that's $6,000 right there. And if we have property taxes as well, you know, say four to five, $6,000, we're already there. So it doesn't take that much to get this to this up to $10,000 mark, uh, but it's, it's something to pay attention to. Next one is mortgage. Chris mentioned this one as well, the interest deduction. So previously, if you had a mortgage of a million dollars or low, lower, you were able to itemize and deduct this as well. Now they moved it to 750. One thing to be careful with here is that this is for acquisition. They're, they're very clear on this one. This was about acquisition of property or improvement of those properties. So we've seen uh, some, some of Americans do this, is where they they, uh, they have equity in their home, but they, then they create a new 30-year mortgage for themselves, take some of that money out to do whatever they want to do with it. That part of the loan is not deductible because it's not for acquisition of home or making the home substantially better. So just to be careful. Now, how they're going to track that, I have no idea. But that's an interesting one there. So <laughs> <laughs> It is. Absolutely is. Um, corporate tax rates. The corporate tax rates. So, Previously, 2017, you can see the, the red bar over there is the United States of America, and this is some of the rest of the countries, Ireland, Canada, Germany, Sweden, Japan. We were on the higher side of things. I think we all know that. What this was really showing you is that now we went from 35% for a top rate on corporate taxes down to 21. That's, that's changing. The, 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 that's going to change something. What, it, what exactly it changes, we, we're about to see. But we've seen Apple, for example, talk about how they're going to bring 260 some billion dollars back from overseas that they have over there that they made money on back to the United States of America. That's a big deal. They're, they've committed to, to create 20,000 more jobs. That's a lot of jobs for people. Um, we're seeing bonuses. I think the, the, the going rate that I've seen, Home Depot, Boeing, AT&T, Apple, they're going to give about $1,000 for a bonus to, to most of their employees, if not all of them. Now people are like, well, $1,000, what is that going to do? Well, if I tell you that the average 401k balance that's out there is $53,000, my guess is that they're going to spend it. <laughs> that's my guess. I could be wrong. Um, but most, mo most people are not going to save that money. Um, I think they're going to uh, do their part and be patriotic and, and, and contribute to the economy. So they're, they're going to buy TVs and stuff like that. So. <laughs> so, so Ken's talking about taxes and kids, right? So you know what? It reminds me of a story. There's a young boy, and he wanted 100 bucks, just a little kid. So he decided, you know what? I'm going to write a letter to the Lord. I'm going to ask for 100 bucks. So he wrote a letter to the Lord. He sent it out. Somebody at the post office caught it. He said, huh, that's kind of interesting. He sent it to the president. The president gets it and go, well, that's kind of cute. I'll give him five bucks. I mean, that's a lot of money to a little eight-year-old. I'll send it back. Little boy gets it. Starts his prayer, goes, Lord, you know, thank you for the, the money you sent me, but the trouble is you sent it through the White House, and they taxed me 95%. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to look at an opportunity for taxes, it's perspective, right? I told you about my junior achievement joke, and that exemplifies it. So, <laughs> so you all know about this. I speak about behavioral finance all the time. I'm going to leave that kind of light this time. 
There's a ton of behavior we're watching now. Now the behavior to be aware of is the me too. Okay? The S&P's up 21 or technology or, or Bitcoin, and we'll talk about that in a bit. So it's the me too, why am I not getting it? Those are the questions Ken and I are beginning to get now. So behavioral finance is still very important. We're gonna go through it in some of your individual meetings. It is an underlying current for everything that we do. Um, and it creates your mindset. Your mindset really is about the people in your life, the home and workplace environment that you have, and the news you watch. Does anybody know anybody who's a little bit negative all the time? <laughs> Do not point at the person sitting next to you, okay? <laughs> but as you go through this, this is a very important piece. So you need that positive reinforcement in your life. It's a very, very important part of what we do. So the influences that we try to give you is the positive side of the equation because what you're bombarded with is constantly negative news and focusing on the extremes, right? And <laughs> Ken came up with another one. He won't tell you exactly what it is, but go ahead. It was CBS. Constant bull and, <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. Shows. So. Constant bull shows. Okay? So be Button. careful of the media. There's some good ones in there as well. <laughs> the, actually, I'm going to tell you something. So since I went to California, I woke up Sunday morning at about 4 a.m. there. Because um, when you're there, it's two time zones. And you're like waking up. I guess it's time to get up. Has anybody watched Sunday Morning? Used to be with Charles Kuralt. Yeah. Still, I'm gonna recommend. I don't recommend you watch TV. I'm gonna break from that right now. If you watch Sunday Morning, I will approve of that show. I, as a kid, I'm six and seven years old. You'd usually watch what? Cartoons, right? I used to watch that every stinking morning and I couldn't figure out why, I just loved it. It's all positive news. Really cool, so if you want to DVR it in today's terms, you can digital video record it, watch it some other time. It's on Sunday mornings before Meet the Press, because as soon as Meet the Press came on, Paul Ryan answered 15 questions exactly the same way, 15 different, and I turned it off immediately. These guys are just trying to beat each other up, so I turned that off quick. Anybody here hear about the market? Has it been good? <laughs> it's not what you're here for, is it? Because we don't really need to cover that if it's been so good. So we'll give you a quick market update, but the most important thing, and I came up with this very quick after a lot of experience, pre one of the market corrections we had, this just flowed right out, it took about 45 seconds for me, but market corrections are swift and visceral. They come without warning. Their length of stay is unknown. They're not pleasant when they're around. They leave scars on those who react poorly. They're temporary, yet necessary. They're vital to long-term market health, and they're the essential part of health to a long-term bull market. Why are those important? I know the first five bullet points you could have said, that's relatives. <laughs> when family comes and stays, they are like this. But I've had people say that before. Are you sure that's market corrections, Chris? Because I'm going to steal that. Um, but it is. It's a very important part, I think, in the overall picture. And this is something that Ken, go ahead. So this is something that Ken and I put together here. Because the question we're getting right now constantly is Bitcoin, market correction, and tax law. Those are the three things bombarding us now. But here's the good news. You guys aren't bombarding us. With, we try to get this out to you once we have some answers for it. And I think that's been important. But we know these will happen. Who here thinks there'll be a correction at some point in the next five years? Every hand should go up unless you're asleep. Okay, there's two or three people asleep, but we're doing pretty good. There's going to be, right? We study this, we wanna make this so understood that when you know it hits here, your friends are freaking out and you're like, well, that's just normal. It just happens. We get it. Okay, so that's the constant, you know, 20% downturn that you might experience. Um, every several years, you're gonna find three years to five years, you're gonna have that. Every day now, you're finding a potential for 2% up or downturn. Remember, as the numbers get bigger, it feels like more, the market's up 200 points. What does that mean today? It's not even a percent, is it? Remember 200 points back in the 80s? Like, oh my God, the world's ending. So there's also uh, some framing reference issues there. This is a good one. This is a very good one. So we keep having this. You know, Chris, this thing's been going for a long time without a 10% correction, hasn't it? Actually, it has. 636 days. People think that's an all-time record, except for the other 12 that are in front of it. The longest period of time, 
from 1990 to 1997. We had seven years, 2,553 2, days without a 10% correction or more. You can have melt ups in the market, not just melt downs. Okay, so a lot of what's been occurring is there's some confidence. There's some confidence around the world and everything at the same time. And we're starting to see some benefits of that. So there's no predictability as to which one this will be, but there's plenty of precedence for where we are. Is that helpful? I like to frame these things. I can talk about a bunch of stuff, but I like to give you, here's what is. Here's how we can frame this. Here's a good piece. So this one's called The Annual End of the World. And we, we've been hearing in review meetings, oh, I have, a, I have a brother, I have a sister who's predicting this, I have predicting that, they're really wealthy. We hear these sort of things. Um, and what I think is funny, so I actually took the liberty and went back to 2017 and what the best eco economic minds were predicting for 2017. So they were predicting low single digit returns with wild volatility because the Fed was about to raise rates and that was going to cause some uncertainty and we had elections, right? And so what, what, what did we find out last year? We found out that the markets were up about, call it 20%, so double digits, and we had like no volatility. It was muted. I mean, it was rare to see a posi you know, positive two, positive three, negative three. It was, it, it was rare to see that. We saw no volatility last year. So it just goes to show that we really have no idea what's going to happen. And I think that we're smart enough to know that now. Uh, <laughs> but what this is really showing is that from top, so, so th this, this chart is really showing year to year, the markets end up at a certain rate. So last year was about 20%. But during the course of the year, we only saw it down maybe one or 2%. That was it. That, that's not volatility. That's not huge ups and downs. That's a, that's a pretty nice, easy 2017 ride. That's like going down, well, it's, it's like going down the hill sledding. But up the hill. Is that <laughs> Sorry, that doesn't if you make can sled up yeah. hill as fast as yeah. downhill, <laughs> I was that's, thinking, it. Oh, that's not gonna make sense. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if we go to the next slide, so that's the end, annual end of the world. What are we seeing as far as returns go for 2017 year to date? Here we go. So the, the, the red line, the one that's on the bottom, those are bonds. Bonds are actually negative. And so one of the things that our team is doing right now is we're evaluating strategies to say, look, if we need safety in the portfolio and we want to mute out some of the volatility, that's why we diversify, right. what are some of those opportunities looking like right now? So that's what we're doing when we're not meeting with you. We're actually evaluating three or four different options right now to say, okay, how can we optimize this for you and how can we get a rate of return with our quote unquote safer money in our portfolio? That's what we're doing right now. Yeah, we had a two to three hour meeting yesterday with somebody just about this, probably the third or fourth meeting. We vet something for two or three or four years a lot of times before we introduce it to the portfolio. Because remember, we're looking for timeless, yeah. not today. Exactly. We want it to be a timeless idea. Exactly. You can see, so the S&P 500 up 20%. International markets, so Nestle Corporation, Siemens, yep. um, Novartis, these are the companies that fall into that space, up about 21% last year. Mm -hmm. uh, emerging markets. You've had emerging markets in your portfolio for a while now, and you're probably wondering, why do we own these things? When are they going to do something for us? Well, last year, they did everything for us. They're up about 30%. So th these are countries like Indonesia, India, uh, China, you know, not necessarily China, but like Brazil, Russia, think, uh, countries like that that, are, that are have the, India is a good example there as well. So emerging markets have done very, very well. You own a portion of that in your portfolio. So when they give us these extraordinary returns, we participate nicely in that. That's what this chart is showing. Absolutely. Long-term portfolio. So we, if we try to put perspective on this. So if we're shooting for a long-term 6 to 7% rate of return, a real rate of return in our portfolio, one of the things that we have to look at is what so, sometimes the markets value our money above what we should have, and sometimes the markets value our money below what we should have. So when it's below what we should have, this is when there's panic in the market. This is when everybody's running for for, for the doors, selling their stocks, if you will. We know that we should be up here, but the markets are valuing our money down there. Yes. On the flip side, we also have to be cognizant of the fact that when there is extreme euphoria in the market, there's, there, there's a potential that we probably have too much money in our portfolio, if that makes sense. It's hard to, it's hard to fathom we can have too much money, <laughs> but it's possible because we know that if, if our average should be right here, we're up here, there's probably 
um, you know, some room for give and take there. So that's what we wanted to show here as far as long term. Uh, your, your portfolio and what we're trying to accomplish. And a lot of you have seen this in your reviews with us lately. This becomes, it's incorporated in each one of you as an individual chart as well. So we put this in to kind of recognize this is what the market's going to do, but we see your portfolio as the blue the whole time. So this is interesting. You've seen this chart before by me. It's looking back at the last hundred years. So if you go back, this is 1900. The s and is really not too good except for about 1930 on. It wasn't the premier, um, it was the Dow back then. But the nice thing about illustrating this is, I want to show you three periods of time. One is post-Korean War. I want to show you post the Vietnam War and really the 68 through 1981 time frame. Post 2000 to 2013 time frame. You see these three circles here? What's the market starting to do in all three of those? Starting to go which direction? Up pretty up. significantly, right? Now. When a bull market is birthed after 13 years or 20 years of what people would call, oh, it's just been hell, the market's been horrible, what tends to happen? What are their mentalities like? They don't believe it. They expect a correction anytime soon. This is one of the biggest upturns we're in right now with the fewest people believing that this is going to last. We born potentially, and historically if you look at this, off of the tech boom 15 to 20 years later, Everything is changing. For instance, the biggest companies back here, GE, Exxon, Mobil, you get the hint, to here, not even in the top 10 today. Is that radical change? Absolutely. That's where the capital's flowing. So when this occurs, it's typically met by disbelief. So what we wanted to do with this slide is show you, hey listen, it's counterintuitive. So we want to give you perspective on these historically that there's been three times where the market's really been rough. This was very rough because banks went under here. Then we did some Securities Act, the banks couldn't go under, the FDIC was open. And then we had this period of time here where the microprocessor was born. You all lived through the 60s, most of you except for a couple in the room. Anybody here not live through the 60s? I didn't, Deb didn't. Did. Yeah, there's four of us here, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I figured that'd be easier than asking it the other way. But as we get here like to 81, you saw the death of equities. That was Business Week's cover in 1981. What happened? The biggest bull market in history, 20 years up. I could have sat and done absolutely nothing for 20 years, and your money would have gone up 10 times. Who here wants to sign up for that? <laughs> There's only eight people good, so Ken can guarantee that one. <laughs> but this is just hopefully great perspective for you to see as well. Um, we don't mean to give this short shrift, but we do want to talk about what's important. And I've got a bunch to talk about in the next technology section. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick minute here if you need to run to the restroom. If any of you have to run who just wanted to see this portion. But when we come back, I'm going to give you What's going to change the world and how soon? You feel free to take off if you want. <laughs>